Thank you.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And, and isn't it a brisk morning this morning? Who, who had their heating on? Jeez, a lot of brave people here. Goodness me. Good. And welcome to those people that will watch our meeting on, uh, on YouTube when it's uh, put on YouTube uh, this afternoon. So welcome to you as well. Our flowers, our beautiful flowers this morning, are courtesy of Helen Knowles. Now, they're in the memory of her brother, Colin. Now, if you remember Colin, he used to be the leader of, uh, what are they called? The songster leader here in our church. So these flowers are in memory of Colin. So thank you very much for those, Helen. That's very, very nice. We do have over and above our newsletter, we do have uh, a few people we, we uh, need to pray for. Uh, Vicky is going into hospital and having a, an operation on her eye, so we pray for Vicky. And uh, Ann Coleman tells me that her son, Peter, now he lives in Sydney, doesn't he, Ann? Yeah. He's had a, a fairly uh, important operation and he's come out of it okay, but uh, he would like, he's requested his mum to ask us to pray for him uh, as he gets better uh, over the next few weeks. Now, I remember mentioning to you a couple of weeks ago that Ross Sullivan's wife, Ruby, her cousin Marley, was not too well. She was quite sick. Well, sadly, she's passed away. So our condolences to you and the family, Ross, and, uh, and we pray for, uh, for their... Uh, we pray for them over this time of sadness. There's no doubt about it. And Ross himself goes into surgery tomorrow. So if it doesn't rain, it pours, doesn't it? Yeah. Our thoughts are with you, Ross. Absolutely. And I was told this morning, Myra Radford is not too, too good. So let's pray for Myra as well and get her back here so that we can, we can uh, have her back with us. But I see Coral Davies is back with us today. Where's Coral? There you go. Welcome back, Carol. And the power of prayer. We have Phil back with us. Welcome back, Phil. Fantastic to see you. And one of the good things, we have a visitor with us this morning. We have Steve Marsh. Steve is over here. Welcome, Steve. Now, Steve tells me he's from a Salvation Army family. But he's been away from the church a little while. Is that right, Steve? Yeah, but at least he's back here today with us. So praise the Lord. Welcome. Welcome to you, Steve. Now, we mentioned a few times about the General's Rally. Um, I think we're getting to the sharp end of the stick with regards to transport. So if you really need transport to the rally, you really need to let Lynn know in the office, and uh, short of that, uh, Rhonda. But we really need to know anybody that wants transport because it, uh, it, we can't organise it at the last minute. It has to be organised, you know, a fair way out. So if you need transport to the rally, please let those people know. And of course, I'm, uh, I'm told that the Just Brass are doing a, a musical prelude prior to the General's rally, uh, t t uh, talk. So that's a good thing, eh? Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. It's a prelude, so you've got to get there early. There's no Salvos Connect tomorrow on Monday. So those of you who come to Salvo Connect on Monday, there's no Salvo Connect uh, on. Kids Church is on today, but the next week for Kids Church, what they want you to do, the kids to wear old clothing. Now, I don't know whether they're going to do painting or demolish the building or what, I don't know. <laughs> but... They, they've been asked to wear old clothing next week to Kids Church, so that'll be quite exciting to know what that's all about. We have... Um, uh, my, uh, Helen's bought some um, lemons out there, so if you want to have a lemon or a few, take some lemons and, uh, and enjoy those. And, of course, we have morning tea out the back today, so always feel free. And, Steve, feel free to come out the back after church and just mingle with the people and have a cup of tea. You're certainly most welcome. Thank you and God bless. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I just wanted to jump in and let you know that we are a fortnight off our next Intergen lunch. 
So that is an invite only because it's a small group and um, we really want to maximise the mixing and get to know one another. Maybe people that you don't know as well from our core family. Um, so Joan, would you mind coming and joining me for a minute? So I've invited Joan to come up and um, have a chat with me because I wanted to encourage those who've received invitations um, to know what you're walking in on um, and to encourage you to attend. So Joan, you attended our last one. Uh, what would you like to tell people about your experience of that? Right. Well, John and I were very privileged to be invited. And there was just a small, comfortable group. And uh, it was very well set up. Um, it was just a lovely time. We felt very privileged that we were able to come. I encourage those that are invited to come next time and tell you that you will thoroughly enjoy. The food was beautiful, the fellowship was lovely. We met people that I hadn't even probably talked to um, as much, um, didn't catch up with some of the uh, youth and the just brass and what have you that were there. And we learned a lot. Um, we had the DVD, which was great to encourage us and help us to intermingle with each other, which is important. You kind of covered everything, so I've got no more questions. <laughs> I, I covered it all, did I? You did, you did well. Um, thank you. Yeah, so thank you, Joan. Thank, um, thank you. And yeah, so if you didn't get an invitation and you feel like you're missing out, please let us know, because there will be another one next term, and I want to make sure if you're really feeling like you want to be there, that your name's first on our list for next term as well. So thank you. This morning as we come, I want to ask you, what's on your heart? Have you been unwell and this morning's just a, oh, thank goodness I made it to the end of the week sort of thing? Is it, I have things going on and I really need to come and just give them to God and be around other people to take sort of my, my eyes, my worries off what's going on? What, why are you here this morning? And if it's only to be with friends, that's great too. But I invite you this morning, Dean's going to be talking about hope, and hope's one of those funny things, isn't it? It's one of those funny things because we, we place our hope in God and when he doesn't answer, we can respond in different ways. When he doesn't answer in the way we want, we can respond in even more funny ways. But this morning as we come, and there'll be a chance in our second song for sharing, and I want to give you a heads up, because maybe you want to share. And as we're singing Are You Washed, we'll have verse and chorus, then a break. Musicians, thank you. But I want you to think of what promises of God do you hold on to? So that's our sharing topic. What promises of God do you hold on to? So that's in our second song. And if you'd like to share, Madison has the wireless mic and we'll go around. But this morning, our first song, We've already heard a little, a little sneak peek of it in the band's prelude this morning. And it's song 391 in our songbook. And it says in verses 4 and 5, God is our strength and song and his salvation ours. Then be his love in Christ proclaimed with all our ransomed powers. Stand up and bless the Lord, the Lord your God adore. Stand up and bless his glorious name henceforth forevermore. We're privileged in this country to be able to come and, and worship in freedom, to come and, and to be loud with our music without fear of persecution from the neighbours or the passerby, to be able to come and stand and bless his beautiful and mighty name. So this morning as we come, is his worship on your heart this morning? Have you come and are, are you able to lay aside the things that have maybe been weighing you or the, the things that have been concerning you aside for the moment and give all glory to him, the one who sustains us moment by moment? day by day. So as we sing, let's stand 
and bless the Lord as we commence worship this morning.
we start, are you washed? You know I'm not one to name and shame. No, John, it's all right, mate. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna pick on you. <laughs> but I would like to mention a couple of ladies who, who need our prayer. And, um, you know, I, I don't do it to embarrass. I never do, and I rarely name from the front for that reason. But Commissioner Heather needs our prayers. She's had COVID. And in that and in her, her state of confusion at times, it's just really been ramped up for her. And, of course, Commissioner Ivan needs our prayers as he comes alongside her during this time and can't always be with her while she's got COVID as well. And Val Gooch, our sister from Women's Fellowship, hasn't been well either and has been going through a, a barrage of tests and all this coming off having Rick sick not long ago. So just now, if you'll indulge me, I'd like to pray now for these beautiful people. Father, we come into your presence this morning mindful that there's been many on our sick and injured list these past few weeks and the, that the colder weather has amplified that. And we bring each person before you now, Lord. We don't need to mention because you know them. You know them intimately. And your hand has been upon them and your, your warmth and, and love has been radiating towards them. But this morning, Lord, you've really placed Commissioner Heather on my heart and Val Two mighty daughters of yours, Lord, that um, through illness, Lord, it's just a struggle. Finding peace is a struggle. So for Val, Lord, we pray that these tests that she's been having find answers, even if it's just to cross things off a list, that it's not, so that they become a step closer to finding what is wrong. We pray, Lord, in the moments where she can have just a moment's peace to herself, that she feels your presence so real with her, just as the person sitting next to her now. We pray for continued healing for her and for Rick as he's had a long journey back from his health battle. For Commissioners Ivan and Heather, Lord, we just pray your peace upon every moment of their day. We think of Commissioner Heather Lord and the beautiful soul that she is and the, the mighty servant of yours that she has been and still is today in her place of residence, Lord. And we just, we pray for clarity in thinking. We pray, Lord, in the, in the moments where confusion sets in that just you calm her, that she's constantly reminded, Lord, of your love for her. And for Ivan, Lord, as he loves his wife dearly, to see her like that must be tormenting for him. So we pray again your peace upon him, Lord. We pray, Lord, that again in the moments for him where he can just have a few seconds and moments to himself, that as he comes before you, Lord, he feels a double portion of your strength and your wisdom in, in to know what to do. We pray for his own health journey as well, Lord. In your son's most precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I love this song, but it reminds me of a few weeks ago when Dean spoke and he spoke about when we use fancy church words with our children. What must they think? Because this is sort of one of those songs. Have you been washed in the blood of the lamb? What a terrifying thought for someone who doesn't understand what it means. <laughs> so this morning as we come, as I said, we're going to have a verse and a chorus and stop. We only have three verses, I believe, in this song. So if God is placing on your heart to share, don't be like me and leave it till it's too late. Think I'll do it in the next one, because before you know it, there won't be a next one. But we're going to have this song and it says, Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you fully trusting in his grace this hour? Are you walking daily by the Saviour's side? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? And of course the chorus says, Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you come to Jesus? Have you given him your life and has he transformed it? 
If not, it's never too late. Ask him. Come to him. Humble your heart and your spirit and just say, Lord, here I am. And maybe for some of us who have been on that journey and some here have been on that journey a lot longer, sometimes we need to do it again, don't we? It's not a a once-off sort of thing. So this morning, as we have this song, if you feel you would like to share about what promises of God you hold on to, and maybe you hold on to them so tight that your knuckles become white, because maybe his promises are the only sure and true thing that you can safely say, I believe. Let's have verse 1 in the chorus and then Madison will be ready with the mic. And if there's no one, well, I'll just stand here and give you a moment. But if you feel prompted, we'd love to hear from you. favourite promise in the Bible is I will never leave me nor forsake me no matter what's going on whether it's medical things whether it's personal things spiritual things God will never leave me nor forsake me I love the verse in Romans 8 for I am convinced that neither death nor life Neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. I wish you could all be in the band room on a Sunday morning because we have a player in our band that has the cleanest instrument and her name is Cass. <laughs> and, and up on this morning, up on the uh, pool table, she was shining her bass. And uh, she kind of helped me with an object lesson about today when it's easy to shine the outside of the bass, but isn't it hard to get inside, in the inside? And some bases are a bit dirty in the inside because it's really hard to get to. But it's so much like our lives. Easier to kind of clean our outside, but it's only the blood of Jesus that can clean us really deep inside. I've been uh, listening to a DVD player as I go to sleep uh, at night and the one I'm, I don't know its name, but the words that come to me over and over again are, your grace still amazes me, your love is a mystery. And then there's the next song says about a girl who's feeling that she needs the Lord to forgive her and the Lord says to her, I know you. I love you, 
I have died for you. Those are the things that I've been listening to and they've really been blessing me. I would be most ungrateful if I did not uh, give thanks for the prayers this morning and for the prayers of so many of you in these days. They've been uh, difficult days, tough days, but, you know, I hold on to the promise in Isaiah 41.10 where the Lord says, Do not fear, for I am with you. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And I've been clinging to that promise. And this morning I can say, you know, he never fails. He supplies my need. My mind has gone back. My dear mum, uh, who her birthday would have been tomorrow in, in heaven now. But uh, when my dad passed away suddenly, I remember her saying these words to, as she gathered the family around her. She said, Dad and I have preached to others about the grace of God all through our years. It's now time for us to show that it works. And so I hold on to the promise in the good book that says, my grace is sufficient for thee. And I claim that grace daily, not only for the day, but moment by moment. One of my favourite verses in the Bible is, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that who shall ever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Amen. A few years ago now, our whole family was going through a really tough time. Something had happened that was really difficult for us to cope with. And um, I was asking God for a word, just a word that I could hang on to. And I expected him to say something like believe or trust or something like that. And, um, and I confided in Christine Reese, and she got straight back to me with a verse. And the only part in it that really mattered to me was um, hope does not disappoint. And I hung on to that word hope. And everything I looked at had hope on it. Everything on the, on the internet, the, everything I looked at had the word hope. God gave me that word hope. And it meant something. It wasn't just something I wished would happen, but it was something that I knew would happen. It took three years, three, uh, three weeks and three days for that hope to come to fruition. But it did. And I'm glad I hung on to that hope. In Proverbs, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. God is helping me to trust him every day. Thank you, Grace. During the World War II, as a young child, I had no desire for Jesus Christ at all. But uh, our uh, scout master said to me um, at a certain age, would you like to come to London? Oh, I said, I'd love to go to London. We were in the county of London, but never been into the heart of London. And uh, she said to me, well, you've got to come to church first. Well, that didn't turn me on. It turned me off. And I thought, well, no way in the world do I want to go to church. So I, I you know, strangely weakened because I really wanted to go to London. So well, what's it worth going to church? It won't hurt. So I decided as I came through the doors from the back there, came through, I said, I won't look up. I kept my head down so I wouldn't see anything, wouldn't see anyone else. And my head was strangely moved. And I can tell you to this day, I still feel that what happened... It wasn't me that was moving my head up. And I looked up like that. And I saw a man on a cross. And I looked at that cross and that man on it. I said, what a terrible thing to do to a man. Terrible thing. 
And I was struck there with that vision of a little man on a cross. Didn't know his name, didn't know why he was there, didn't understand it, that anyone could be put on a cross. And the, the, that memory has never, ever left me because of the man on the cross. But today, by his grace, although I didn't want to go to church or be involved in Christianity whatsoever, the man on the cross is remembered in my heart and in my mind, in my spirit. And I'll never forget the reason when I was told why he was on that cross. I really wasn't interested in so much of that. But it bothered me at a later stage. Why would someone die on the cross? What's the reason? I didn't understand the reason. And so today, by God's grace and God's grace alone, I understand why he died on the cross. It was for me. It was for you. I know no other man that would lay down his life. Many people in the armed forces go to, to but die in warfare. But there's only one man that died for the whole world. Jesus Christ, he is my Lord, he is my Saviour, and I seek his forgiveness every day because I'm human, and, but he is a wonderful Saviour. Blessed be the holy name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's have verse three, and then... The band? Verse three with the band. And um, was there anyone who didn't get to share the altar? Yes, Coral. So after this, we'll go head to Coral. Okay. one that I've clung to all my life. When my, uh, it's where the Lord will be with me, he will guide me, he will hold me by his right hand. I can't remember all the words perfectly like Ivan did. Um, when my children were very tiny, my husband was on what they called dog watch all night and I was a bit fearful and I used to cling to that. But I've, not only then, but I believe that he really does hold our hand in happy times and sad times. And when I pray to God for people, I believe that he's holding this hand of mine and he's holding with his other hand the people that I pray for. So I believe that there's still that um, triune God um, where it's a triune thing. With my prayers holding on to him and he holding on to my prayers as well as the people that I'm praying for. And I just want to thank him because he's always there in good times and bad. heard throughout each promise that God is there in the good and the bad. I just want to share with you a verse that I was given and I looked it up because I always have my version of it in here. But when we were going through some troubles, this verse was given to me by a beautiful Christian woman and it's Exodus 14, 14. 
and it says, when I can see it, the Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. And when that person gave me that verse that day, it was as though it was God himself speaking it to me. I heard it. I didn't just hear it with my ears. I heard it within and his peace came upon me. And I love that verse because it covers everything I've got going on. The Lord will fight for me. I only need to be still. That's the bit I struggle with, but that's my problem. This morning as we continue in worship, I want to say thank you to all those who shared because it's not always easy, especially when you're around people you know. And it doesn't matter how many times you may have shared to get up in vulnerability and honesty before your core family and before God and just share what he's been doing in your life. So thank you. We're going to have a clip on the screen and it's called, an enc- well, it's an encouraging Christian video. So let's watch what's on the screen. You know, it's set up there, hope is not a strategy. Without a plan, hope is just another idea. But God has a plan for you, for each of us. To give you hope for a brighter future, for a better life in him. And I said before, hope is one of those funny things. Because we place our hope in God and when it doesn't turn out quite right or the outcome's a negative one, we go, well, where was he? Or, you know, we, we wonder what's going on. But what I've really come to realise these past couple of years is that that better life and the hope is in him for me. It's not in the things of this world. It's not that everything will happen that I pray for the way I want it to. It's purely my better hope, my better future, my better life is just in him. And the rest is all just stuff. And as hard as that sounds, like that includes my kids, my husband, my family everyone I know. It's about me and him. And that was a very hard lesson for me to learn. But it's one that's um, continuing. We're going to have another song um, and it's called There Is None Like You. And most of you would know this. It's an older song now. And it says, There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. And I could search for all eternity, Lord, and find There is none like you. And I imagine for most of you this morning, that's your testimony. That there's none like him in your life. That it doesn't matter how close you are to someone. The relationship you share with Jesus. That personal, that intimate. And I know some people struggle with that word. But that intimate relationship that we have with our our risen king. We can't replicate. So as this song comes on the screen, sing it or close your eyes and listen to those around you or to the screen and just come before him and give yourself a fresh or say thank you or say to him, there is no one like you. Thank you. There is no one like I can 
could search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. There is none like you. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity long and find there is none like you. And each of us has people, places, things on our heart and our mind that we bring to you in prayer daily. And this morning, Lord, as we come and as we worship you, as we give all praise, honour and glory to you, Lord, we sit at your feet and we just bask in your radiance. We just feel your presence with us, filling us, surrounding us. And for those that have shared, Lord, the promises that they hold on to, Lord, we say thank you. We say thank you because you're a God who loves, you're a God who gives us promises, a God who speaks, who, who acts in our lives. And this morning as we continue in worship together as, as a church family and for those who will view later as part of this church family, I pray, Lord, that you continue speaking to us. But, Lord, give us ears that listen. Not just hear but listen. Give us a heart, Lord, that can be permeated by you. That when we hear from you, Lord, we actually know. Know that it's your, your loving voice speaking to us. For each of my brothers and sisters, Lord, I, I pray that um, as we sit and as we focus on you, they have such a height and sense of your presence with them. For those who haven't been able to join us physically today, I pray that wherever they are just now, Lord, that they too know such a closeness to you, that they feel your peace come upon them if it's not already there, that they feel a stillness, that they know how they are loved by you. So as we come, Lord, we come to say thank you. Thank you for the blessings that you pour out upon us daily. Even at times when we don't deserve it, you lavish your love upon us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen.
just now, um, Keith's going to bring the band message and then Helen Knowles will come and bring our scripture readings. We'd like to play Joy Webb's lovely uh, piece, It Is Jesus I Need, Who Can Make It Possible in Me? Without Jesus I find I am so often blind to the truth he is wanting me to see. Lovely words, they'll be on the screen. Um, and it's lovely to welcome Peter back in our band. And lovely to see Wendy today. of me this morning not to thank God for answered prayer in regards to Peter and Wendy and I am just so pleased that God has restored you and your health and you're back with us. Now the reading this morning or readings are taken from a few books of the Bible and we're starting with Psalm 3 Verses 2 to 6. Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. 
But you are a shield around me, O Lord. You bestow glory on me and lift up my head. To the Lord I cry aloud, and he answers me from his holy hill. I lay down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear the ten of thousands drawn up against me on every side. Now we go to the book of Joshua, chapter 5, verse 6. The Israelites had moved about in the desert 40 years until all the men who were of military age when they left Egypt had died, since they had not obeyed the Lord. For the Lord had sworn to them that they would not see the land that he had solemnly promised their fathers to give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. So he raised up their sons in their place. Now we go to the book of Job, chapter 5, verse 6. Yes, verse 6. 16, sorry. So the poor have hope and injustice shuts its mouth. And now to Job 11, <coughs> verse 18. You will be secure because there is hope. You will look upon about you and take your rest in safety. You will lie down with no one to make you afraid, and many will court your favour. May God add a blessing to those readings. I'd like to draw our attention to this picture that's on the screens. Put the microphone up, my wife says. At least it wasn't put your fly up. I'd like us to spend a couple of minutes just looking at this picture. This picture was painted by the 18th century artist G.F. Watts. And the painting depicts the image of a poor woman against the world. Her eyes are bandaged so she cannot see ahead. Her, in her hands is a harp, but all the strings are broken, except for one. The broken string represents her, sh or all the broken strings represent her shattered expectations, her bitter disappointments. The last string, though, is the string of hope. When she strikes that string, a glorious melody floats out over the world. It fills her dark skies with stars. The artist has painted a great truth for us, that even when all else is gone, we can still have hope. If we were to look at this picture, this painting, how many of us could see ourselves sitting there thinking that there was no hope? There'd be many people in our world today who feel that way, I would expect. The world that we live in today is a world of uncertainty, would you agree? A world that wherever we look, there is doom and gloom. We see things such as financial uncertainty, Rising crime, unemployment, war, climate change and how our young people appear to be out of control. We're in a world that constantly informs us of the bad things that are going on in an instant and that forgets about the good. I remember as a child watching the local news. There'd always be stuff that the, the reporters would tell us about and often there was and not nice stuff, but we always ended with a community story that was positive. We don't see that so much anymore, do we? We are left feeling 
in the doldrums, really. We live in a world of uncertainty that struggles to see hope around it. With this information overload, we can start to feel as though all of this is out of our control and that we are powerless to make a difference. Some people choose to give up and do nothing. Others become negative and only see that things will fail no matter what they do. They can become the doomsayers in our lives. Why do you bother? Why don't you just sit down, shut up and give up? Others put their hope in tarot cards, psychics and all other things that are not of God. Or they try to build personal kingdoms of wealth and power to try and provide security. Even Christians can easily become like this if they're not careful. With all the uncertainty, we can feel, or we can start to feel powerless and start to give up hope that things can be different and start to accept things for the way they are. We start to accept the things of the world and lose our focus on the God of hope. Now this is not just a modern day issue. There are many examples in the Bible that talk about the feeling of there being no hope or a lack of hope. In the Old Testament, Rhonda loves the Old Testament. The Old Testament has many stories of hope though. We only need to look at the Israelites. They're wandering in the desert for many, many years. Now, I can tell you, had I been in that crowd, I would have given up. I would have gone, I would have said, that's far enough, I'm going no further. But these people, these obedient people of God, they continued. They remained faithful to the promise that God had given them and the hope they had in God. This wasn't just a flippant hope like you hope that the sermon finishes soon. This is and was a truth that they knew in their entire being. If you look at the book of Numbers in chapter 33, we see the list of the events like an inventory of their travelling in the wilderness. To read it absolutely exhausts you. For these people, the Israelites... They had to have belief that their God was a God of hope because they would have given up before they even arrived at Etham. (coughs) These people personally knew that their God was faithful. He was faithful to them and that they would be blessed greatly when they arrived at the promised land. When we look at the instance of the woman caught in adultery and brought by the Pharisees before Jesus... I can only imagine what that woman was thinking. That she could see her days numbered and that they were coming to an end. But through forgiveness, through the forgiveness of Jesus, he gave her hope. What was it that he said to the Pharisees? The one among you without sin should be the first to throw a stone. I can see that woman there. I can see her shaking in front of these men. But how do you feel she would have felt when she saw them back away and leave one by one? Jesus filled this woman with hope because the Messiah, God himself, had stepped in for her on that day. And showed to her that not all was lost and hopeless. That she, just as the Pharisees, could have the hope of love and acceptance from God. He showed her that our God, her God, is a God of hope. For us today, there are still promises of God's hope. We only need to turn to 2 Corinthians where we read, Therefore, having such a hope... We use great boldness. We read here that we are to be bold. Bold as believers in Christ because of the hope we have in him. Or maybe in Acts, 
Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will rest in hope because you will not leave my soul in death or allow your Holy One to see decay. Here we are assured of our eternal life with Jesus. What else could we truly hope for but to rejoice in the kingdom for eternity? The hope that we have in Jesus gives us that ability, that desire to live as transformed people. We no longer need to look at the world with despair or see no hope in the world. It is because of the love and the grace of God that we are transformed people. Through the transformation that we can have in Jesus Christ, the way we approach people and display to them love, they will change also. The eyes we view world events through will be through the eyes of Jesus. There is hope that we can be all that God created us to be, to change, to grow, to be more than we could ever, ever imagine. We have a God that will not allow us to face more than we can bear with his strength in us. You know, many of us have probably read this truth over and over again. But I ask you, do we really believe it? Do we truly believe it with all of our heart and soul? Do we have the hope in God that is true? Our God is a God that will never leave or forsake us. He will be there for the whole journey with us. And we are never alone. And even when we feel as though all is hopeless, we still can know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Who are the called? It's not just those who've gone to officership or full-time ministry, but it's everybody that accepts Jesus Christ as their Lord and Saviour. We are all called to serve the risen Lord in the way he has equipped us, the way he has empowered us, and in the places that he puts us. We can live in hope because we have a Saviour that will return. Amen? And promises to wipe away all tears from our eyes. You know, the Salvation Army's 10th Doctrine says this. We believe that it is the privilege of all believers to be wholly sanctified and that their whole spirit and soul and body may be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Our whole soul, our whole spirit and our whole body may present, be presented blameless. When we agree to this publicly, we proclaim that we have hope in Jesus Christ. And this hope will sustain us through this world of uncertainty because as believers, we will meet our Saviour again. As it says in Acts 2, 26 and 27, Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me. You will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. He will preserve us. When we look back at this picture of this woman and the harp, how do we see hope for ourselves? Will we still think of things as hopeless and out of control? Or will we be like the story of the woman and cling to the sound of that one beautiful note that turns our darkness into stars? There still will be tough times over and over again when we feel we don't have hope and all is dark and we feel lost and powerless. 
But we need to remember to turn our eyes upon Jesus in these times. We can look into his wonderful face and reflect on his promises and faithfulness to us. Because when we do, things are brought into perspective. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. There are times that we walk and we listen and we talk. And we feel like all is hopeless. But when we hold on to Jesus, there is light. There is light. There is hope. There is grace. There are many people in our congregation, Rhonda mentioned to this morning, but there are others that are going through journeys where they feel hopeless in the, in the situation. But God is still there. God is still on his throne. He is still on his throne, friends. And we are his called people. We are called to be a light on the hill, to bring light into the darkness. We have people in our, our family here that have served in ministries where people have come into their past that have felt all is hopeless and all is lost. It's not. It's just that they can't see through all the muck and the darkness at the time that they're there. And so this morning you may be experiencing that in your own life. And I invite you to turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. For the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. There's cards at the front here if you'd like to come and take one. That might be helpful. That has this picture on the front and on the back. It has that reading I just shared from Acts. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. You will not let your Holy One see decay. You know, the... The favourite part of that verse for me is my body will also rest in hope because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead. God will not abandon us. This song it says, O soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Saviour and life more abundant and free. Throw death into life everlasting, he passed, and we follow him there. O oh, us sin no more hath dominion, for more than conquerors we are. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace.
Heavenly Father, this morning, we've come and we've spent time in your presence. We've come, some of us, we know why we've come, others we don't. And it's my prayer this morning that for those who don't know why we were here, that you've given us that answer. That you've answered that question for us. Lord, in the times that we, we feel lost, we feel as though all, is, all hope is lost. May your light come into our darkest spaces. May it come in and blow all the darkness away and that we would see you in your glory and you would speak to us and remind us that we are your children, that we are loved, that we are seen, that we are created for a reason, that we are not a mistake but we are the child of the risen Saviour. Lord, we thank you for your gift of grace, that you died on the cross for us, but you had victory over death, that we would have that promise to hold on to, that we, too, can share a place in eternity with you. Lord, we also, we also pray for the courage to share with others that same promise that we know and we hold on to, that we would see men and women, boys and girls in the kingdom, that we would not have expected except through your prompting of the Holy Spirit in our lives to speak of those promises. And so, Lord, as we sit, as we listen to your Holy Spirit and we respond, we turn our eyes to you and we look in your wonderful face. And so as a family this morning, I invite us to sing that beautiful chorus. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. now be waited upon for our tithes and free will offerings as the ladies play lord you know that we love you you know our thoughts and intentions know the depth of devotion found in our lives today if our love has weakened if our fervor has waned turn us lord by your spirit let us love with love unfeigned lord you know that we love you
Our hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. And Lord, we thank you for that promise today. We bring our gifts and our offerings and our worship to you, Lord, and we pray that they'll be accepted and that our service will also be accepted and that will be all be used by you, Lord, to further your kingdom. Amen. Our last song that we're going to sing worship today is song 905. And the words they say, Well, I've been to the river, I've been baptised, I've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. I've been changed from the creature that once I was, and redeemed is now my name. I've been changed, I've been newborn, newborn. all my life has been rearranged. I think my daughter's trying to rap. What a difference he made when the Lord came and stayed in my heart. Oh yes, I've been changed. And so therefore, I invite first seat Alto to come forward. Come on. Yes, come on. She looks like she's got the fidgets. She loves this song. And so I pray that her enthusiasm spills all over you like the blood of the lamb and that you are transformed by the name of Jesus Christ and by his grace and by his love. So Madison's going to give us a little bit of a belting out here and we're going to stand as the band accompanies us in these and then I'll share a benediction. So, and we render this morning to thee, O Lord, our, th our thanks for mercies past, with grateful hearts employing thy favour to the last. And at the great awakening, may we be found above 
with saints and angels praising thy providence and love. Go to love and serve the Lord. Go to love and serve the community and bless all those who you meet in your day to day, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.